Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to wrap up my nonfiction November reading, which turned out to be nonfiction December reading. I just did not get any reading done basically in all of November, and then I really caught up with my entire TBR for nonfiction November the following month. First thing that I finished was Invisible Child, Poverty, Survival, and Hope in an American City. This is by Andrea Elliott, and I mostly listened to this on audiobook. This follows a really long period of time, like more than 10 years, of the reporter Andrea Elliott who worked for the New York Times doing a story about a child from, I believe she's from Brooklyn, seeing her family go through shelters in Brooklyn. So her family is on and off having a homeless status, and it's them kind of like making ends meet, sometimes feeling like everything is finally working out for them and getting apartments, and then how it sometimes all comes crashing down, really. The main person that we're following is a little girl named Dasani as she grows up, and she finds a, a lot of opportunities and ends up going to this Hershey school in um, Pennsylvania, which um, was started by the Hershey Candy Man. And so you see this family go through a lot of struggles as they're dealing with the welfare system and trying to satisfy a lot of what the welfare system is asking of them. It comes to a point where the family ends up separated and um, it's really devastating for the children in particular what separation does to them instead of keeping the family intact. And this book kind of argues that keeping the family intact is the most important aspect. Um, and I could definitely see that through how it was being reported. So if you really like investigative things like that where you follow one subject for a long period of time, um, this would be a great one for you to think about for fans of like Evicted by Matthew Desmond or any other social justice kind of books. I think this is a great one to pick up for that. I didn't think this book was perfect only because it was a little bit too long, maybe 100 pages too long. It's almost 500 pages and I also thought that at parts it was too long because it was repetitive. It felt like some things really could have been cut down. I also thought this book would have done well with having pictures of the family and the things that they are going through inside of the book. I was able to find a lot of the main articles that um, there was like a long series that this was based off of that was published by the New York Times and those did have photographs. So I thought that the pictures were really important. I ended up giving Invisible Child four stars. I think I wanted to give it four and a half stars, but I think I'm settling on four. That was the first one that I read. It was very good. And then after that, I finished Hitmakers by Derek Thompson. This book focuses on virality and like how things get viral. And the main argument that Derek Thompson is uh, putting out there is that like virality is not really viral. Um, and a lot of the times it's like people who are, who have a lot of followers are the ones that are pushing out content that then becomes viral. But because you have like one person who has many, many followers, that's how it happens like that's how it snowballs and a lot of the times people think that it comes from nowhere or like that this video that you know joe schmo was posting on the internet out of nowhere is what becomes viral and i kind of agreed with that argument i thought that it was posed well i thought the stories were interesting he focuses a lot on different kinds of um, aspects of pop culture i did think that this book was a little bit dated or some of the things that he was talking about have either already happened or like we're not a part of the conversation anymore it was funny at one point he talked about how different companies were going to start like streaming sites and um, bundling their entertainment kind of like a Disney plus and I mean that did end up happening but when this was published that was not a thing it was a really quick and easy digestible read and I enjoyed the audiobook of it I ended up giving it three and a half stars then after that I finished Hola Papi this is by John Paul Brammer and it's stories about growing up as a kid who has Mexican ancestry but who doesn't really feel Mexican at all because of how he was raised to only speak English and to really like anglicize and Americanize. That's him trying to discover those aspects of himself and also understanding his sexuality. He does this by answering letters written to him at an advice column. So I did end up liking this but I think how I felt about this is kind of clouded by the fact that I've read other books kind of like it that I've liked more. For example, All Boys Aren't Blue and also Saeed Jones' How We Fight For Our Lives. I thought that those dealt with the same topics they had punched at the end of them and this one felt like it had more of a fizzle so for that reason i gave this one three stars after that i finished squirrel hill the tree of life synagogue shooting and the soul of a neighborhood by mark oppenheimer this looks into the squirrel hill neighborhood of pittsburgh after the tree of life synagogue shooting that happened in 2018 and it follows the people that are living in this neighborhood so it's not really so much about the perpetrator or even really about the victims it talks a little bit about the victims and interviews some of them um, but it's mostly about what the neighborhood was like after the shooting. It follows, you know, like teenagers who were at the Starbucks 
right down the street and their reaction to it people who were painting different windows with um, messages it talked about the person who came up with the stronger than hate kind of image that ended up being plastered everywhere so that one right there and like how he came up with it it talks about like the first person who put together a gofundme to raise money for the victims and like how that all snowballed and what they did with the money so it really focuses on a community level i thought that this did a good job of making you feel like you were kind of like a fly on the wall and seeing how this neighborhood is dealing with it healing um, and thinking about this tragedy i think i would compare this to like parkland by dave cullen just from seeing what happens after the tragedy i like to read things about kind of like that healing process more than i like you know to give myself nightmares about what it was like to be inside that synagogue that day so i really valued my time with this and i gave it four stars after that i read from a whisper to a rallying cry the killing of Vincent Chin and the trial that galvanized the Asian American movement. This is by Paula Yu and I mostly listened to this as well. I think most of all of these I listened unless they were graphic novels or graphic nonfiction. This one I ended up giving three and a half stars. It didn't really deliver everything that I wanted from it. It has a really jumpy timeline um, and I think that was kind of a detriment. I also think it was a detriment that it focused so much on the two perpetrators and like what they were feeling and thinking and I think that's really not important in the story. I think what's more important is like the system the justice system and like the things that were written into law the stuff that was law is what impacted if the perpetrators could go to prison or not and not so much like what the actual two perpetrators did you know but this was really interesting because i'd never heard of this case uh, about vincent chin in the 1980s he was at a bachelor party for himself he was about to get married and there was a fight that broke out at this like bar strip club that he was at with his friends two white guys killed him and it looks into how the community felt after that and it looks into how asian americans which were a very small population in detroit at the time really got together and created organizations and started doing protests and really advocated for themselves to politicians um, to make changes happen it also really focuses on vincent chin's mother lily and how she ended up in the united states kind of her journey to becoming a mother and how her life changed after this happened to vincent i did think maybe it was written this way because it's for a young adult audience but yeah it didn't quite meet all of my standards i think after that i read awake the hidden history of women led slave revolts by rebecca hall it was illustrated by hugo martinez and this is a graphic nonfiction look into rebecca hall's research into um, women-led slave revolts it is not a look into the hidden history of women-led slave revolts in my opinion i gave this one three stars mostly because i really valued watching rebecca hall do her research and get into you know different kinds of institutions and museums to track down all of this information the thing about this is though is that she is dealing with something that um, a lot of history hasn't been kept about so this topic is very very you know vague and muddy and so a lot of the information that she's looking for is very hard to find and so a lot of the time she is supposing and imagining things about what they did um and it's not like clear in the in the historical text that it actually happened i think this was missing kind of like a, a mission i think that it wanted to do something but it didn't quite have all of that information to accomplish it so instead you followed a different kind of story i think there's nothing wrong with that i really liked seeing her as a black woman try to get into these very white spaces to get information i also didn't love the illustrations they're not particularly my favorite style though i do think that at times it's very effective like for example let me find a page she'll be kind of like walking around and then and there's kind of ghosts and things behind her kind of show you that slavery is still present in life today so this history that happened is still important to how it is that we are existing today in general this book is really sad and i just want to make you aware there's a lot of triggers in here and mostly it's like watching her deal with these triggers and deal with this trauma that she is seeing by reading all of these documents so there's there's quite a lot of pondering about like the true violence and um depravity that happened to a lot of slaves um that she is reliving by reading about them and how difficult that is for her as a scholar but also as like a human who has this ancestry um as well after that i read the really short james baldwin the fire next time i'd never read this before i thought that it was quite smart it's very zippy and like it was 
it was a lot more i guess fast pace is not the right word stream of consciousness i guess is what i would say it, it really goes all over the place he's mentioning a lot of topics that have to deal with racism his thoughts about it it's published originally in 1963 and i thought a lot of the things that he's talking about are still really relevant today i thought the most interesting aspect of this was him talking about the nation of islam um, and meeting the players that were involved in the nation of islam and their view on race and it's how he sees things differently i think it's it's valuable to see that because like not every person's perception and idea about race is the same and that was really evident in this he talks a lot about how he has white friends and how he may be looked down upon by people in the nation of islam because he has white friends but he comes from it from a perspective i think of like optimism and um how he was raised in the church kind of where it's like you want to love your neighbor you want to love everyone and as long as people don't hurt you there's no reason for you to hurt them or to have this idea about them while it is searing in parts and parts he's really like laying down why he disagrees or is really angry about the state of things at the same time he is very optimistic about the future um and and I don't know, I'm kind of sad like thinking about him writing this in 1963 and thinking about what he would think about the state of things today. I ended up giving this four stars. If you are thinking about reading this, don't do like me and listen to the audiobook because you will miss a lot. Sometimes I did read while I was listening, but towards the end I just listened to it and I did feel like while I was getting everything, he's just so fast. Sometimes you like miss some of his points, especially because he's talking about so many things at once. After that, I finished The Waiting by Kim Suk Gendry Kim. I can definitely say it's not nonfiction. While it does use stuff that is real it's the story is not real and i definitely didn't know that before i started reading this so that kind of was a little bit of a disappointment just because it was hard to follow things because i had a preconceived notion that this was about kim sik gendry kim's mother it's a look into what happened after the korean war where north korea and south korea were separated and how a lot of family was lost in that sense and have never been able to reunify so when you start this book it's mostly about kim sik gendry kim looking at her mother or the character that is Kim Sik Gendry Kim looking at her mother as like an older person, as someone who is vulnerable, as someone who um, you're trying to teach things or you're trying to get to get on a, on a schedule or to do something that you tell them to for their health and for their well-being and them not really listening, being set in their ways because they are older and this is the way that they have lived this whole time so they're not going to change. Seeing them deteriorate through their health, the burden that that puts on uh, a son or a daughter uh, in that situation but also at the same time how much she values taking care of her mother so it's that balance and so it flashes back and forth between the present day of these two characters that represent the author and her mother and then the representation of the mother looking back into how they escaped from north korea and went to south korea it's really really sad i still really really love kyung sik Jandri kim's art style the style is just right up my alley. I love the way everything is drawn and laid out. And those pastoral scenes that we saw in grass for previous work, you can still see here as they are kind of going through the countryside. It's just quite beautiful to look at. And I really, really love her style in general. I ended up rating this one four stars. The book that I read after that was No Filter by Sarah Fryer. This is the inside story of Instagram and this book was one that was not originally on my nonfiction November TBR but I thought I would talk about because I did read it during my nonfiction December. This is kind of like a random book that I picked up on audiobook just because it was available. It had been on my TBR but it wasn't like one that I was going to read for this nonfiction November and I ended up loving this book. I thought that this book was so captivating and engaging and really brought me back to kind of like how I felt after I read Bad Blood by John Carreyou. So this was really exciting in those same ways where you're getting to see the back-end story of like how this app started, what were the ideas of it when it got started, and how it has transitioned and become this like global phenomenon. It's particularly interesting to see how it grew from being like such a tiny company that had 13 employees when it was sold to Facebook for a billion dollars and that was like unheard of at that time when that happened. The ideas behind how Mark Zuckerberg thinks that apps and things should grow and scale, how that wasn't really the vision of the original founders of Instagram and how that relationship kind of deteriorated over time but particularly that beginning part where you're learning about the idea of Instagram and how how it got started I thought was the most interesting aspect of it. All of the people that put money into Instagram before it got really big like Jack Dorsey of Twitter who ended up 
getting screwed by Kevin Systrom, the founder of Instagram. They were actually friends. Kevin Systrom decided to go with Mark Zuckerberg. So seeing all of those back-end deals and relationships and um, like where all of this money money is happening it's just really fascinating to me and made me want to read more books like this i picked up the book about uber super pumped so we'll see about that one but if you're looking for something like bad blood if you're looking for an interesting story of how an app really grew and created this entire new influencer career i think it's just fascinating to see it from the beginning sarah fryer did a great job of getting into the headspace of these people and also like interviewing all of these people and tracing you through this entire evolution of instagram uh, i ended up giving this one four and a half stars the more i think about it the more i think it might be five stars and the audiobook is awesome the last book i finished that was on my original tbr was lindy west the witches are coming when i read the first chapter of this or listened to the first chapter of this i was kind of blown away i was like yes this is exactly the kind of thing i want to read right now that first chapter thinking about donald trump i was like yes this is going to be the one for me and then she had other essays that weren't as interesting in that same sense and so that's why i felt like this essay collection ended up being kind of like a mixed bag because some topics were more interesting than others. I also feel like I've heard her talk about some of these things before, like her troll situation where she like confronted her troll. I think what I like more is when she focuses more on politics. I just thought that it was going to go somewhere different than it actually did, especially when it's about the witches are coming. So I really thought it was going to be focused a lot on Me Too and a lot on like women and how women have dealt with a Donald Trump presidency. I did enjoy my time with it and it was really funny. I did chuckle a lot reading this. I just thought that it was going to go somewhere different than it actually did. Did. that's the end of my stack the only other thing that i didn't actually read was girly drinks by mallory omera this is the last one for my tbr i read maybe like three chapters of this and then i ended up deciding i wasn't as interested in this topic i wasn't really interested in ancient history and that's what it was really focusing on in the front it just didn't really like that setup of it it felt very much like every chapter because it's focusing on a different woman in a different time period it didn't feel like there was a full thread going through all of them and so you could really read any chapter in this and just learn something about that woman in that time period in that chapter and not have to read the other chapters i like a narrative arc in my nonfiction. for that reason i just thought you know like i don't need to read this and i decided to dnf this one let me know if you've read any of these books in the comments down below and i shall see you in my next video bye bye